The third and last mechanism that we'll consider for dealing with externalities is that of tradable permits. We'll see how tradable permits have been implemented in the US to cap and reduce the levels of sulfur dioxide emitted by coal-fired power stations. Well, we're on the turbine deck, Rawhide Energy Station, so if you start at the far end and work this way, there's three stages with the turbine itself. There's a high pressure, an intermediate pressure, and a low pressure section. Then you've got the generator, and then you've got the exciter. So below all that is where it transfers electricity out onto the grid. So really, everything else out here, all, everything out here is to drive that turbine and generate electricity. Everything. So this is the heart of it. This is the heart of it. Once you get past the boiler, everything to the west on the facility is basically for emission control. The Rawhide Power Station is a modern, low emission plant operated by the Platte River Power Authority in Colorado. Burning coal produces many externalities, including sulfur dioxide that results in acid rain. We burn about 3,700 ton a day. How much would a day's supply of coal, what would it look like? Would it be a big, a well, big pile? I'll, I'll give you an idea. Most people are probably familiar with, you know, have seen freight cars with coal in them. Right. One of those cars holds 100 tons. So 37, oh, okay. 37 of those is what I use a day. Wow, okay. The next building over would be the scrubber building. That's where the sulfur dioxide is removed. Rawhide Power Station is able to keep emissions of SO2 very low because they start with low sulfur coal mined nearby and then use new technologies to remove the sulfur dioxide and particulate from their exhaust gases. Rawhide is one of the cleaner power plants because the utility chooses to invest heavily in pollution reducing technologies and as a result they don't need to use all their allocated permits to pollute. How does a tradable permit work? Well, the government decides on some arbitrary level of pollution that it regards as acceptable and says, we don't want any more than that in the atmosphere. They then issue permits to firms, enabling them to pollute the atmosphere up to that level. We are allocated allowances on an annual basis because of the way we operate this facility, we are long on emission allowances, meaning that we have more than we need based on the amount or tons of pollutant that we admit into the atmosphere. But the interesting thing for economists is that these permits are tradable. The firm can sell the right to pollute the atmosphere to some other firm if it's willing to pay enough. There is a market in permits to pollute. Economists argue that by making permits tradable, it will minimize the cost to society of this level of pollution. Tradable permits provide utilities a choice within the cap set by the government. They can invest in new technologies and then sell the unused permits to others, or they can continue to pollute and purchase permits on the open market. For some producers, the cost of reducing pollution may be too great. Perhaps their facilities are older and nearing the end of their useful life, or perhaps the available coal has higher levels of sulphur. Investing in new technologies may not make sense to them, and therefore purchasing unused tradable permits may be the best option. If we're going to have a level of pollution, who do we want to do it? We want to minimise the use of society's scarce resources. So the people that we want to pollute the atmosphere, if we're going to allow some pollution, is the firms for whom, if they couldn't use this form of pollution, would use up most of the scarce resources to find some other way of doing it. So to minimise the cost in terms of resource usage, the people who should be able to pollute are those for whom alternative ways of dealing with the pollution are the most expensive. Those are exactly the people who will pay the most for the permits. We spent just our share of a project that was over $20 million to improve sulfur dioxide removal, to improve particulate removal, we saw that as investment that generates additional allowances for us now because our allotment stays the same, 
but our pollutant rate goes down, therefore we generate more allowances. The market became favorable last year and we chose to sell some into the market to reimburse ourselves for some of that expense. So society gets the optimum volume of pollution at the least possible cost. If technology changes and different firms now have the greatest incentive to purchase the permits, the market in permits allows this new optimum ownership to happen. But the scheme isn't free of problems. First, there are political pressures. Powerful interest groups may persuade governments to set the permitted pollution levels too high. In some instances, the permits were originally not auctioned at all, but given away to firms who could then resell them, thus giving windfall profits to polluting companies. Second, there may be significant transactions costs. Unless resources are spent policing the use of permits, companies may simply ignore the rules and pump more pollutants into the environment than the permits allow. Nevertheless, many economists believe that such a scheme in principle has potential to make a real contribution in limiting environmental damage.